It's Minner. So we're playing with the S1000R today. Lots to talk about. It's been a while. Let's start out with uh, Rizoma Parts. Sorry for the mess in here. i line these guys up. Anyway, you can see this oil filler cap here. Notice that you don't see an O-ring inside of here. That should have been here. When I was filling the oil last time before I went to the track a couple weeks ago, I noticed that the O-ring became shredded. It's contained inside of this wonderful napkin, but you can see shredding here. And uh, I don't know if the camera can pick this up, but you see, just starting to split. It just doesn't look like it's intact, and my fear is that if I just kept pushing this, this would wind up in my engine, or parts of it. It is on uh, the inside of this, but my fear is that as I extracted this cap, pieces of this would fall in, and I don't want that in there. So I'm back to the factory cap, which, you know, by the way, I'll bring up in a little bit. Um, the handlebar ends. So as I mentioned, I took the S1000 out of the track a couple weeks ago into Chuckwalla. And uh, tested out the, uh, the Prius towing capability, which is uh, <laughs> quite an experience. It works. It works. So when I go to the track, I take these bar ends off. And I put the stock bar ends back on. They have more weight to them. And if I crash, well, I destroy the mirrors. So i done that a couple of times now, taking them on and off. And when I, wrote, when I arrived at the track this past time, this guy wouldn't come off. Just wouldn't. I had limited tools with me. I'm still getting my, uh, my track flow going, if you will. And uh, I couldn't get it off, so what I had to do was keep this lightweight, flat blue Rizoma bar end on here. And on this side, I, I tacked on the stock. I don't know why I did that. I should have just kept both. Uh... Oh yeah, I'm gonna get into that. So I tried. I took this off first, so that was no problem. I'll get to this one. This one won't come off. So I have this one on, this one off. Then this one here, there is a small nut inside of there, and there's an expanding metal piece. So the metal piece slides into the nut. Actually, the nut slides into the metal piece. I should do this. And as, a, as the metal piece goes into the nut, it starts to expand, and that's what holds it in. So this nut was frozen onto the actual screw that penetrates this whole mechanism. And once again, limited tools couldn't get it off. So here I am, one stuck, and one can't get back on. So I wound up with one light bar end and one heavy bar end from stock. No big deal. Not, not exactly what I call a tragedy. But, you know, while we're on the topic of Rizoma... So since then, um, I have not tried to extract this thing because I think it would require major surgery and likely lead to some uh, poor outcomes. So what I did was uh, I unfroze the nut from this thing, and now that's back on. And as you can see, the mirrors are pointing outwards because I'm not splitting to work in this so much. That thing is so loud, it's just safer when I'm splitting between traffic here in California. And people just, they just hear me. Uh, and, and it's quite chill, so I'm not using this to split so much. These extra couple inches will make a difference. This is my, my canyon cover, my fun trip in the mountains, and my track bike. And it's awesome at that. So, uh, Rizuma Pot's giving me some hot burn. A little bit annoying there. <laughs> Mirrors have functioned flawlessly, but, you know, these bar ends, not a fan so far. What was I going to mention now? Oh, yeah. Oil filler. So, I'm at the track on my, I don't know, fifth time out, I think. I'm pulling out there, and one of the, one of the coaches out there, you know, points out there's a leakage. Some oil leaking down here. It's getting all under my coolant hose here. Uh, not quite on the foot peg, thankfully, but I took it in, wiped it up, checked my oil level. It was too high. I put too much oil in this thing. So, drained a little bit of oil, but I noticed there's no O-ring on this, this stock cap here. So that's that. So what's the mission for today? 
mission for today is to uh, head to a road that I first found when I was heading to Chukwala Valley Raceway. Highway 74. This is a highway that is a highway beyond the desert. So first I go to the desert and when you think you've lost all civilization, keep heading east until you feel as if you've been abandoned by all possible help. And you take this highway to, uh, well it's really, I mean it's just east, eastern California, parts of California that aren't uh, well advertised. And uh, you know, great place for race, a racetrack, that's what Chukwala is. Um, other music festivals, festivals out there like Coachella are out there. Palm Springs is in that direction as well, it's not far away. Uh, but there's uh, some mountains, so uh, this Highway 74 basically links an area called Temecula or Aguanga, which isn't important for anybody, but these are desert-like areas, so it kind of links one open desert to another and separating them are some mountains. So, uh, the mountain ride, I was in the Prius towing this S1000R, and uh, it was pretty sketchy, man, I gotta be honest pretty sketchy uh you know it's sketchy enough towing anything with a prius but going through a mountain pass at night with high cliffs freaked me out one thing i did notice was you know what a fun road this must be in daylight so if i can get there and out of there in daylight i will so all that being said we are off the bike is a mess it's full of sand i did pump air into the tires it's the least i can do on track settings took more oil out to make sure I did not spill in higher heats clean the chain of course all that sand in the desert it was windy it was sandy out there it's a friggin mess is what it is but you know cheap land for a track no one cares about the noise all that good stuff. So uh, let's, let's get out of here, man. Let's get out of here and see what's, see what's going on out there. So I'm heading out here, and I just realized that after I was messing with my oil, I didn't do the final tightening on the oil drain. Glad I recognize that now before I go too far. Come on, guys, you can do it. Come on. Come on, come on, come on. You couldn't possibly tell me no U-turn. In that case, I'm looking front I'm looking front and back. And I'm taking a U-turn. That's right. Yeah, I'm not gonna risk that. I'm going uh, a ways away. You'll also notice that I took the larger windscreen off, not because I didn't like it. I actually do like it for higher speeds. It does lead to more buffeting, but overall it it does block some wind and, and actually I think it makes it a little quieter to me. And I get less pushback as well. Less, uh, I think I get less neck strain. Especially if I'm running on the freeway at higher speeds, which I will be doing. Uh, so I, I took it off because I had a suction cup mount for my last track session. And that suction cup mount, the best spot for it was right here on the, on the tank. And uh, the screen was just getting in the way, basically. So, I had to go. At least for that day. I'll probably put it back on. I actually like it. So funny after riding the Harley more regularly day to day, you have to remember, you know, how to posture yourself on one of these bikes, you know, hold yourself up. Using that abdomen and your knees, light on the grips, Harley, like you're hanging on just by your hands. I mean, there isn't a lot else to hang on to. Now I've never ridden a Sportster. 
but the Dinas and the soft tails and even uh, the one touring I rode, not that that really plays into this. There's just nothing like splitting on a sports bike. Or super naked, something more sporty. And you can split in all of them very well, but the level of control you have is just so much more encouraging in a smaller, lighter bike. Especially the tight stuff. A lot of times I find myself sitting back if it's really kind of tight when I look ahead between these, you know, look at this lane that my camera's picking up right now. You get a big truck there on one side and, you know, I'd, I'd think about it on the Harley and sometimes I just sit back and if it looks a little tighter. And so you, you tend to not make as much ground and you don't reap as much benefits, at least me. Some people are more aggressive than others, but the point being made is just nothing like splitting on one of these things. It's just a better tool for it. And on that same theme, a scooter is the best tool. I mean, if you're talking about how nimble something is, how narrow something is, how light something is, there's nothing like splitting on a scooter. Especially in dense city traffic. That's why they're so popular in those tiny European streets. I never really understood waving across like a Jersey barrier. I mean, there's... If there's a Jersey barrier, it means you're going pretty quickly, or you could be going pretty quickly. It's also like, how far removed do you have to be to wave at somebody, you know? Like, at what, what level of vision do you have to be to wave at somebody? I think there's a barrier between us and it's a highway or an interstate or, you know... Any road that's like 50 miles an hour plus and is the opposite side of the road, Especially when it's got a little bit of space in between of the grass here. I mean, it's, I don't know. You're going you're gonna to want to get in an accident, like, looking in the wrong direction, waving at somebody. I mean, if you're in a smaller road, city street, side road, you guys are within 10 feet of each other when you pass. Obviously, pay your respects to that rider and be kind. But everybody has their own cutoffs. Mine personally is highways. I just, I just, I, I think that's my, my bar for being ridiculous. I have waves. I see, if I see somebody wave at me across this thing, I'm gonna try to wave back. By the time I notice it, they're already past me. And I think that's what annoys me the most is that I feel like I can't uh, reciprocate properly. So Mount Temecula, we're heading towards uh, that 379, this road called 379 that, once again, this is what I was describing as one desert area. You can see there's mountains around here too, but, you know, a settled area called Temecula. Further up is a place called Aguanga. I don't even know if I'm pronouncing that correctly, but... The 79, the 379 road is a left off of this road. It's quite a distance. Also straight ahead is my wife's family's orchard. It's not a, it's not in use, there's no commercial use at this point. It's just an extra property where they can chill basically. So I don't know if I'm gonna have time to explore that highway 74 today just because of the light. I don't have good light, it's not a good road. A lot of switchbacks, a lot of, you know, 180 degree turns. It's, uh, it looks like it'll be fun to explore. We'll see it either way. But I gotta stop by the orchard. It's a good ride out here anyway, the road is decent. I had two cats that died in July. They had been with me for nearly 15 years prior that moved with me nine times when I was going through my uh, early professional years and getting established they lived in some dirt holes uh, some very cramped spaces they spent a lot of time trapped in cages in the car while I was traveling from one state to another so those little guys and gal, guy and gal, they put up with a lot and the least I could do 
Because when they both happen to pass within the same month, put them in a nice place. Nice empty orchard. It's a Tuono. Nice empty orchard with good views. And I, I prioritize respect. Fun is one thing. Fun is important. But if you can't you take care of your professional obligations, if you can't respect those people and those animals that deserve respect, and the fun's gonna wait for a moment. So we'll do that. We'll go to the archery, pay respect, see how much time is left, and enjoy this road in the meantime. It's a good road through the desert. place is empty it's very strange it's, I've said over and over again in my videos California you know you get to the coast and it's it's very populated very dense full of traffic it doesn't take much to get out to this area where there's it's empty man I think these cars are uh, limiting my fun so I may have to remove them I need Clarence, Clarence. I need Clarence, Clarence! This is the entertainment for the area. Cocktail, stage coaching. I should explain it. Horses made of metal. Can you guys believe that? It's all oxidized metal. So yeah, Palm Desert, Indio. There's the 379 to the left. It's not gonna hold up unless I uh, practice some ingenuity. So, off-roading on the uh, S1000. Really putting these Dunlop Q3s to the test here. Oh yeah. Nice piece of scenery here. No complaints. So the second leg of that trip's gonna have to wait till next time. But for any of you guys that like the S1000R, I thought its existence in nature is a good contrast. A little modern, a little aggressive, and it's a background like this. I've never seen you look so good, my dear.
you're going to be able to rely on a bike, you have to know that it's going to get you there. You have to trust that not only will it get you there without breaking down, but it's going to give you enjoyment along the way. You're going to have fun. It's going to reward you in the corners and blow your mind when you have an open space. Good feelings, good sounds. So it's always done that. And it, it makes you look for excuses to do things. See people you haven't seen, go places you haven't been. It's a good day. We'll hunt that road very soon, maybe later this week. And if it's snowing where you are, hang in there. Hopefully just a couple of months. We'll do some riding for you.